Children, you brought from the gutter to be PDP chairman, Wike fires back at Ayu. And uh, Controller General of Nigeria Customs Service queries the NNPC over release of 98 million liters of petrol per day. This is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anakon. The Controller General of the Nigeria Customs Service, Colonel Amid Ali, retired, has queried why Nigeria National Petroleum Corporation Limited, the NNPC CL, uh, would allow the release of 98 million litres of petrol per day for local consumption instead of 60 million litres admitted by its own computation. Now, he said he has always asked the NNPC where 38 million litres of that petrol was taken to only if only 60 million liters is consumed daily. Well, to discuss this, we have um, Deji Awobiide. He's a legal practitioner. Deji is also always very good to have you join us on the show. Glad to be here. Great, uh, Deji. The, I mean, it's been weeks and weeks of calling out uh, the NNPC. The Nigerian government, we all remember, I'm sure that you were at the NBA conference here in Lagos where the SDP uh, presidential candidates also continued to raise the alarm on the fact that there's um, some sort of, um, uh, he said, connivance or complicity on the side of government um, as to how much oil theft is going on in the country. And he queried it. Um, there have been also so many people who are saying that Government also has to know, or security agencies might be in the know as to where all these, you know, petrol goes to if we're consuming just 60, uh, 60 million liters. A great question that the NNPC, um, sorry, the Controller General of Customs has raised. So let's start from the basis. The SDP presidential candidate has asked the question, and government's response, or the NNPC Limited's response, um, is, is, is it, how well does it sit with you? I think we should start from there. Well, um, I think the issue is a very clear, very straight one, as it relates to how this crude oil theft has gone on for years and years unabated. And I, I recall that while I was still in the secondary school, it was an issue that kept recurring as to how much uh, crude oil Nigeria was losing daily to crude oil theft. And it's not surprising that the CG of, of the customs has made the point, and rather pointedly as well, that there needs to be some form of explanation by the NPC as to the discrepancy in the amount of crude oil released per day to Nigerians. And of course, you recall that um, one of the reasons why there was the Occupy Nigeria protest back in the day on subsidy removal was because of all these huge payments that were being made uh, being paid by the government to supposedly the crude oil dealers and distributors without any commensurate uh, effect on the economy in terms of how the people seeing the impact of these subsidy payments. So it seems to be that it's a very orchestrated uh, scheme to continue to freeze our collective resources. And that's why they see, and I mean, if anybody can make the point, uh, the CG of customs is in a very good position to lay the accusation at the table of the NNPT. And all, of, all through the years, you've not found any meaningful answer that has been preferred by the NNPC as to why there is so much discrepancy in the crude oil supply and the amount that is being paid as subsidy uh, by the NNPC to these people. So there seems to be some form of connivance. I mean, it's very difficult to make a defense for the government in this regard, because everything seems to be pointing in the direction that is some form of connivance going on. As at today, the NNPC Limited is um, accusing churches, places of worship, uh, mosques and churches, uh, of, of uh, conniving with oil thefts, uh, oil thieves, I beg your pardon. Um, and that they're saying that most of these petroleum products are being found or hidden in places of worship close to where these illegal bunkering, uh, you know, takes place. But again, I ask, um, 
why is it that in, in 2022, the NNPC, with all the names and the rebranding that it's been giving, the, the window dressing, they're still unable to account for where all of our crude goes to? And I'd like to just add there, as we speak, there's so many groups that are coming out again to say, well, now that you've given Tom Polo this contract, this 40 billion plus contract, um, what about us? Why does this seem like a settlement of sorts? This is, of course, if you ask me, another kettle of fish on its own, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. And again, it just, just beggars belief that a country like Nigeria, with all of its security apparatus, with all of the several um, security outfits that we have, would has allowed this kind of thing to go unchecked for so many years. And it, like I said, it only leads to one conclusion. And that conclusion is that the government is actively involved, or some elements in the government, so that I don't say that the government is entirety, some elements in the government are benefiting from this process. Because you have the police, you have the Navy, you have the Army, you have every security outfit, the NNDC is also there, that can prevent this continual theft of our collective resources. Because particularly at the country, we are dependent on um, exports of crude oil and the sales that we get from it. When this government came into, into, into power, one of its uh, excuses that we were throwing around was that, well, the price of crude oil has gone down and has dipped. And of course, there is a deficit in terms of what was expected or projected and what is coming in. Right now, because of the war between Russia and Ukraine, there's an increase in the price of crude oil. I mean, this is a time when we're capitalizing, we're capitalizing on how much of um, uh, crude oil we can sell and get, get money for. But unfortunately, we have a budget deficit that is largely due to the continued theft of our collective resources. And then you also have the proliferation of illegal refineries. I mean, Portacourt, recently you had um, the case of the black suit in Portacourt, where people could not even see, it was so, it was so bad that even Bonaboy had to sing about it. And, and you still see that you have those government agencies and those government security outfits there, still unable to identify exactly who the culprits are. Now, if you recall, um, Pompolo is allegedly standing trial um, at the Federal High Court for some related offense. And at some point, he was uh, told the court that uh, he could not be found. Now, this same Pompolo that will not be found is not the same person that the government has awarded the contract to defend the pipelines. So that tells you something. It tells you that there's some underhand dealing going on and that there's no sincerity on the part of government in really addressing what this problem is. We have not made any concerted efforts to tackle the issues that are facing us. And unfortunately, this money is going into the pocket of private individuals who I believe are likely to be cronies of the government. And, you know, it, it, it's unfortunate that it's the common people, it's the common man on the street that suffers the effects of this continued theft of our collective resources. Let's talk more about um, what um, Adebayo, the SDP presidential candidate, said at that NBA conference. You also talked about the fact that um, Many other countries like us who, well, you know, have oil, um, has it, they, they, it reflects on the economy of their countries, um, you know, what they use these monies for, monies from, the, you know, accrued from the sale of these crude, as opposed to Nigeria. And how many tankers, the number of tankers that leave this country, the sale of the oil or the crude in those tankers are actually not repatriated into the country, hence why we're suffering um, and borrowing to, you know, service the loans that we already, uh, you know, are, are indebted for. So, again, why do you think that this has, because again, we can't also just put this at the, you know, footsteps or the doorsteps of the Buhari administration. Like you said earlier on, it's been happening in successive government. Is it safe to say that there, there is a concerted of effort, a, determine, a, de a determination of sorts to um, somewhat... Um, put us in the state where we are. Don't forget, um, the NLC, um, I beg your pardon, um, ASU is on strike as we speak. ASU has appealed to the government to use the monies from the Abacha loot to pay for what they're asking for. Again, we're also having a, a collapse in many sectors uh, of the economy. So one would wonder, 
Is this something, a plan or a strategy of sorts to continuously cripple the country, even for a government like the Buhari administration that promised to bring us out of the doldrums? Well, it, it looks like, uh, it appears to me that it's, uh, so there's, all, there's uh, some form of organized crime going on. Because it's the way and manner in which every government that has come has tried to play the ostrich regarding this particular food oil theft. Every time you see that nobody has accounted for um, how much food oil is missing, how, 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 how did it get missing, what exactly happened, nobody has been held accountable. In fact, the president himself is the minister of petroleum, so nobody is going to ask the president any questions about it. Now, if you if, if you if you recall that the role of the national assembly is to be the voice of the people, is to be, go there and ask these questions that you and I are talking about, and ask those questions, those tough questions of these agencies. The NPC is not bigger than the government. The NPC is also not bigger than the national assembly. But what happens is when they have these citizens. They try to exercise the oversight functions and they call these agencies to come forward. You have all these questions asked, but nothing ever gets done afterwards. I'd like to refresh so, your I'd like to refresh your memory country. about the situation with Professor Ponde. I mean it ended after that dramatic um, Nollywood scene that we saw in that court, uh, yeah. rather in that uh, in that committee. As as until today, exactly. we're still yet to revisit it. So again, what exactly is our problem in terms of accountability in this country? Do we just not care, or is it that we're blinded? I, don't, I think it's, it's the conspiracy of the political class. Because, like I said, the National Assembly's role is to be the voice of the people. They are actually there to represent the people, to ask these questions that you and I are talking about, to ask these tough questions of these agencies, to bring them to account. And like, I, and like you've rightly observed, what they do in exercising the oversight functions is that they play to the gallery. They invite them, they ask this question, they put the cameras in there. Some of them faint, some of them could laugh, some of them say off the mic. And it seems as if there's a romance with corruption and nothing ever gets done. After the, the dramatics that they display at the oversight of, uh, hearings, you never hear anything about it any longer. So that would fade to bits. It happened with the last uh, National Assembly, it's happening with this one as well. So the questions that they're, they're right before us, I mean, even the Confederate of Constance is asking the questions of the NNPC. And you release 98,000 uh, barrels every day, but only you have records of only 60,000. Then that means there's a discrepancy of 38,000 that you cannot explain. Now, so it's, it's funny that the NNPC would make the excuse that these barrels are found in churches and in mosques. Where are the churches? Where are the mosques? Have the leaders of those churches been brought to book? Have the mosque, the imams who are, who are, who are leading the, 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 the congregants at the, at the mosque, have been brought to book? Have questions been asked? Has anybody been put by the police? So these are, these, are, these are questions that you and I are ordinarily asking. But you see that when they ask these questions, it's like a show, it's like a charade that's being put out there in the public. And nothing gets done. And that's why I said it's a conspiracy. Because they make it look as if they are doing something on our, on our behalf only to discover that they get all these things get swept under the carpet. And we are back to, this, to, to, the, to the very beginning. And the effect of this on the common man is that once we are not able to meet our budget estimates, then there's the deficits that we have to deal with. The debts continue to pile, and you keep, you keep paying subsidy payments to these people for oil that they never cleared, or they never really even disbursed to any, 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 any filling station. So you are paying and subsidizing their corruption, which is a problem. Mm. The government came into, into power with the claim that it would be tough on, 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 on corrupt practices. But what you see is that there is a constant romance between this government and corrupt practices. Okay. And it's so unbelievable. It's, it's close to election season. Campaigns will kick off on the 28th of this month in earnest. And, of course, these people who are vying for the very revered office of the president will come telling us all kinds of things, including the things we want to hear. Shouldn't we be making sure that this is one of the front burner issues? Because, again, I, I might be wrong, correct me, we sensationalize these issues, and after a while, they give us something else to talk about, and that becomes a back burner issue. Where do we go from here? I'm, look, I'm looking at solutions. How do we make sure that we're not just, you know, 
manufacturing crude, or rather taking crude from the ground, sending it abroad, refining it, bringing it back into the country only for us to for it to be stolen, and then Nigerians have nothing, no say in it. Again, we're actually um, very indebted as we speak. Monies are coming in, and those monies are not going into things that would give us some plowed back profit. What kind of leader should Nigerians be listening to, and what solutions should we be looking for? Well, thank you, Mimi, for the question. Uh, well, honestly, I've always made the point that the most important offices are the offices of the legislators, National Assembly, the Senate members, the House of Assembly members, the House of Rep members, because they are the people who are supposed to advance the cause of the common man, of the Nigerian uh, masses. But unfortunately, we usually focus on electing uh, the executive governors and, and the president. And that's because the National Assembly has not put its weight sufficiently to ensure that these executive officers are accountable to the people. Because we can't all go to the National Assembly. We can't all go and ask all those questions. There's only a limit to how much pressure groups can do. But the people who have our mandate to ask these tough questions, to impeach, to ensure that agencies are accountable, are not pulling their weight. So what we should be doing is, as we go into campaign season, it is normal for politicians to come with the rhetoric. Uh, I mean, you, nothing that would, they would say will be new. Uh, I mean, after eight years, almost almost eight years of uh, President Buhari, I'm not sure that there's anybody who will be sold on any anti-corruption campaign or see. You can't do much without having the support of the National Assembly. Mm. And that's where the focus should really lie. Who are the people that were elected into these places, into the House of Assembly, into the National Assembly, to ensure that they ask these four questions and ensure that they follow through on policies and ideas. Okay. Now, uh, as we go, ASU was on, on strike, has been on strike over six months. Um, the, the, the cost of ASU has been pleaded by several people, even, even from the teachers of, of, of world, have also extended um, you know, an argument in favor of the government answering ASU. What do you find is that you have a government that is tone deaf, that is not willing to listen to the common, the common, the common man's request. I mean, the kids who are at home are students, are children of the common man. Mm. Their own children are either abroad or in private universities. So, what are we talking about? This good oil theft affects everybody. It affects the common man the most. Mm. Now, what audit has been done by the FCC to ensure that the arrest? I mean, it's an economic crime. You ask me, if a person steals good oil, it's an economic crime. The agency should be in the forefront of arresting these people mm. and bringing them to book. But okay. what do you find? You find that the agency goes silent on cases like this, and they wait until the new government comes in, and then they start again with this that, um, on ISV charity that has gone on for too long. Okay. So for me, the way forward is that we should focus on electing uh, credible members of the National Assembly okay. to advance our collective cost in ensuring that we have um, proceeds of our crude oil sales reflect on our economy and our goals. Well, Deji Awobide is a legal practitioner. Always a pleasure to have you here or, and always good to hear your analysis. Thank you for having me. All right. Thank you for being here. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. When we come back, we will continue our discussions on the PDP crisis and, of course, Governor Wiki's response to the party. We'll be right back.